Well, I've got this Fisher turntable. Well, it's actually already repaired because the first part of the video did not record, unfortunately, when I was testing this unit out. Anyhow, it wouldn't auto cycle, it wouldn't reject. It would actually play a record okay, but none of the automatic functions over here did absolutely anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the teardown. This is after it's all completely repaired. It's all cleaned up, everything looks great. So I'll show you the teardown, the repair process, parts of it. It was way too long to document. It took about four hours to completely disassemble this unit. Okay, so the customer asked that I go through this turntable. I went ahead and checked it. It seemed to work, but the mechanism is extremely gummed up under here, as you can see. I mean, this is 40 years of old grease just hardening. So I'm gonna go ahead and basically take every single part out of this unit and painstakingly with acetone, Q-tips, uh, pipe cleaners, whatnot, I'm gonna go ahead and clean every metal to metal contact. Now some of those I can't get to, like this one, it's riveted on, so I'm just gonna have to soak this in acetone, work it, and then blast air through it, and then re-lube it. So anyhow, here we go, an arduous undertaking. Okay, so I'm like halfway to three quarters of the way through the teardown and reassembly. I've uh, torn apart and re-lubricated the uh, speed mechanism that's over here. When you switch the speeds, it raises that little arm up. And this is a, not a belt drive turntable. This is a rim drive turntable. And so it raises and lowers the idler right here. And uh, a lot of little stuff I really couldn't show you very easily tearing this thing apart. A lot of little intricate. And of course, it's a discovery mission to begin with. I have to remember where everything goes. So I really couldn't film much of that. But I wanted to show you on these motors. Um, this thing is pretty, pretty gummed up. And I thought I'd show you... Uh, pretty easy to disassemble these things and service the motors and so Go ahead and make some witness marks So that you can get this back together in the same orientation that you took it apart Because uh, if you put the motor together upside down, which is a hundred percent possible It will run the wrong direction. So like I said make some witness marks You can get it all back in the same orientation that way uh, There's really no other way I can do this so let's go ahead and start tearing it apart. So usually you can just go ahead and break these screws loose. There's nuts on the back side. And some of them have washers. This one, it looks like it has a washer, but it does not have a washer. And well, that's something I certainly didn't expect. Those are actually blocks that are going to come out. So I need to make witness marks on the blocks so I can get them back in there in the correct orientation as well. So we'll just go ahead and mark those with a couple red spots. And then these are the blocks. The other one just fell out. So once you've got that apart, you can usually pull the rotor right out of here. And so now you've got the lower bushing. It's a uh, ball on this one, but it, it's really dry. It's just a bushing. There's no, it's not a bearing. It, it has a uh, ball point bearing, but that's it. Now, ooh, this one. I don't know if it's been hot, but look at the color of the shaft. If you can see that on there, I'm gonna try to pull this washer off. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of in the groove. I wonder if it's been spinning, but it is absolutely bone dry. So let's go ahead and we'll get some acetone and some cotton swabs and some paper towels, and we'll just go ahead and clean the shaft off. And then with the cotton swabs, we'll go ahead and clean out the bushings. Then we'll just put some fine machine oil on there and it should be ready to go again. Okay, so let's try to get the ball out of here. Hopefully it'll just fall out and it did. Perfect. Now I'm just gonna get a cotton swab with some acetone. I'm just gonna clean the inside of the bushing really good.
Same thing on the other side. This one I'm actually going to try to work all the way through. Alright, and that works and the gimbal mount still is very free on that one. So now let's go ahead and just get a regular paper towel. Once again, moistened with acetone here. We'll hit it a couple times because look at all that came off of there on the first pass. Oh, second pass looks much better. We'll clean the bottom. Definitely much, much shinier shaft. The shaft looks really good now. Okay, so I've got the ball here. Just going to go ahead and drop it back in there. And I'm going to saturate it with several drops of oil as well as I'm going to fill this up with oil because there's normally a felt pad in here that allows the oil to migrate into the bushing over time. Same thing on this one. I'm just going to go ahead and fill this up really good. This is just light machine oil, nothing special. And then I want to go ahead and lubricate the bushing as well. Okay, I've got my witness marks lined up there. Now I need to put my blocks back in. Just for good measure, I'm going to add just a fine bit of machine oil to the shaft right here. I don't have the nuts on the back yet. Got the nuts on there. All right, all tightened down. Okay, make sure it turns freely, and it does. Absolutely perfect. Don't know if you can see it down in there, but it just coasts and coasts. Okay, so I have the main drive gear here, and I need to go ahead and get all this old grease off of it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and douse it with some acetone. And I'm just gonna take an acid brush, and I'm just gonna brush it. until it's clean. Simple as that. And now make sure you work all these uh, little attachments. Now these are riveted on. You can't get these off again. So make sure you get the acetone up underneath there, down in the main area. Oh yeah, you just gotta keep working all these things. Get the acetone in there. It's gonna, it's gonna moisten up the grease and eventually it's gonna flush it out. There may be a need to do this twice or even three times because you can see the color of the acetone is starting to get darker right now because it's being filled with contaminants. But once we go around this thing, get it all nice and clean, we'll go ahead and relube it. Get the, tr the trip pawl is especially important that there's no grease and no uh, no slime in here. It, it, it doesn't work well when there's slime. It has to be totally free moving. This is what triggers the end of the record arm return so I want to make sure I get a good a good amount of acetone in there to clean any grease or gunk that just might have been in here over the years. Alright, I think we're almost done. I think I just need to hit this with some compressed air. We'll get it lubed back up and get it all put back together.
think I need a new acid brush. I think this one is out of shape. Okay, let's go. Uh, I'll go dry this off with some compressed air, and we'll put it back together. Okay, so this one bushing is absolutely seized. I can't get it loose. So I'm going to hit it with some hot air from my hot air rework station. The grease is absolutely solidified in here. Oh, it's just starting to move. It was turning the inner bushing before. Now that I'm heating it up, it's moving much, much freer. I think I can get it off here in just a moment or two. Let's try to lift it off. Oh yeah, it's coming. I actually bent this rod a little bit trying to get it off just a few minutes ago. Just trying to pry it. Look at that. It's just the grease is all caked up in there, just really nasty. So, another high point of this disassembly and cleaning. Okay, so I've got most of it back together, but I want to go ahead and clean the switch right here. That's the mute switch. And so, whenever this is in motion, these contacts close and it basically shorts across the cartridge. When it's back in the home position, the contacts open. So I have it in a position right now where the contacts are closed. I'm just going to put a piece of paper through here and just lightly scrub the contacts because they are silver plated and it does help just clean them up again. So I've just got the paper in between the stationary contact on this side and the movable contact on this side and I'm just basically I know it's hard to see with my finger in the way, but I'm just scrubbing up and down. There we go. Contacts are all clean. Put it back in the home position now. And we're all back together. Motor's lubed. The entire mechanism has been cleaned and lubed. All the gunky old grease is gone. Everything looks good. I think we're ready to go ahead and fire this thing up and uh, give it a test. So I know it's going to be hard to see, but now that the turntable is out, I'm just going to go ahead and spray some glass cleaner on the cabinet on the base that it goes in and just go ahead and give it a quick cleaning years and years of dust I mean this thing was brand new in 1980 so we'll get it all cleaned up make it look really good for my customer there we go much much better than when we started this was clean when I started by the way yeah that's how much dirt came off of this thing so same thing over here, this thing is absolutely filthy. I've sprayed some glass cleaner on it and I'm just going to use my acid brush and just clean up that stainless steel. Try to make it look like new and then I'll just go ahead and wipe it off. Yep, I'm going to go ahead and spray that knob over here as well. The acid brush does a really good job getting underneath everything. Look at the color of that glass cleaner, it is like nasty just a few seconds on here and it's gonna look like new when the customer gets it back Alright, check that out. Much, much better. This thing was absolutely filthy. So it's all cleaned up. I'm going to go ahead and wipe down the idler right here. So a cotton swab with some acetone and I'm just going to go ahead and wipe the surface of the idler. This is not a black idler. It's, it's like clear colored. I haven't seen one in years, but the, the rubber is extremely pliable. You can see as I'm moving it, it's just bending and flexing. This is back when they made stuff good. Look at all that. Gonna wipe off the motor pulley as well. Okay, I think it's ready to clean the inside of the platter now.
All right, so once again, just a regular paper towel soaked with acetone. And definitely got some stuff out of there. All right, so next, just a little bit of fine machine oil on the bushing here. Give a little bit right up inside the bushing here as well. Long past overdue. All right, check that out. It was white when I started, like that white. But I think it's for a good cause. It definitely looks much better, virtually like it's brand spanking new at this point. Well, last thing to do, attach the spindle. Well, let's give it some power and let it run through a couple cycles and make sure everything works correctly. Well, just about forgot, I need to secure the turntable to the frame, to the chassis. Those lock it in place so it can't be lifted back out. So it's riding on the springs right now, everything's good. All right, so I have a record on the spindle. Let's go ahead and put this in auto start right here. And we'll let it do its thing. Make sure it drops the record correctly, sets down correctly, and then we'll see if it picks up correctly at the end of the record. That looks perfect. And it's working great. Okay, let's go ahead and see if it picks up at the end of the record now. All right, here we go. Let's see if it picks up, cycles home, and shuts off. All right, that looks good. It's definitely slowing down. So let's get a 45 on here. Okay, so here is a 45. Now this machine does not seem to auto detect the 45 RPM record. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move it to the front of the record and we'll ask it to drop. And there it is playing perfectly. And I'm gonna let it play through and then I will return it at the end and make sure it picks up correctly and returns correctly. Okay, so it has neared the end of the record. Let's make sure it goes ahead and picks up and returns correctly. Absolutely perfect. Let's make sure it shuts down. So that's it. It's working great. Tore the whole thing apart. Disassembled virtually every single mechanical part in this unit. Relubed it, cleaned it, got it ready to go again, just like brand new. So once again, at this point, I wanna give a sincere thank you to those who have supported my channel with a donation via PayPal or by having me repair your unit like this one. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead, leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. 
Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Once again, everybody, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone, have a great day. Bye-bye. Yeah, Steve, Gary, listen, I just wanted to thank you so much. I uh, picked up the turntable this morning, and it works great. It's like brand new. <laughs> it's amazing what a little grease will do. Anyway, Steve, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Have a good day. Bye-bye.